What was it like getting lit on fire? That's a question I've never really got to ask anybody. It was, it was, you know, I'd love to say that it was like super easy. And I, I was really cocky in the beginning because I thought this is going to be easy film, relatively action wise for me. It wasn't, you know, anything crazy. But the exciting thing was, hey, I'll be able to do the burn. So I said to Ben Wheatley, I was like, I really want to do the burn. And Ben's an incredible actors director and he was always iffy about that. He was like, okay, well, you know, if you really want to, I'll talk to them. And, and, but he kept, as the movie went on, he kept saying like, you know, you don't have to do it. Like he'd come in and I'd be like, why are they making such a big deal of it? He was probably like, you have, you have great hair. And then, like, no, well, what happened was, and then I saw in the schedule, I noticed that the burn was the last day. Because I remember I said it was shot in sequence, except yeah. for Walter Copley's burn day where he's set on fire comes... You know, that's after that's people left. That's and that was, and that was, that was, and then when I pressed it, that was for insurance. Yeah, it's a low budget movie, and it's like we're going to finish the movie. Oh, so they wouldn't do that for a normal stunt. You know, so there's definitely something around the odds and burning that is becomes uncomfortable for insurance and for you know logistics. And so uh, yeah, so I did the burn on the last day, and you know it was all fine, but it was a little, it was a little terrifying. Burn fire is a different. Different thing, and uh, when you saw how seriously all the stunt guys took it as well. Yeah, I've been in some crazy stunt movies, but the burns, man, and when they're going to set the act on fire, then it starts to get, and the more fire they're going to put on you, the more crazy the, the intense preparation. So, were you wearing like just sort of flame flame retardant? It's incredibly impressive. Yeah. I mean, they 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 you wear like flame retardant gel on a sort of a fire suit underneath everything, and that gel is so cold that if you were just wearing it now, you'd start shivering. Wow. So like, and you want oh, that, man. obviously. <laughs> once, what you, once the fire's on you, yeah. you're glad for the freeze. But yes. if you wait too long in that, you will actually start shivering. Like it's, it's it's some sort of substance that is really, really chilling your body temperature oh, down. Oh, weird. I had no idea. And and so you've got that underneath, which is a great layer of protection. And then they set the, they, they put glue on you that they're going to set on fire. Huh. And, um, and you know, the, what made this one particularly a little bit more tricky was I have to put myself out and I couldn't see when I was totally out. So it's like you have to sort of guess when you're out, go down, and then they were like, and if it's getting too hot, just you know, lay flat down on the floor and we'll jump on you with fire extinguishers. Oh my God. And that's, that's how they did it. And you're, that's yeah. terrifying. You're in character while you're doing this too. So it's, it's yeah. kind of walking and chewing yeah. gum there. Yeah, the problem, actually, to be honest, the thing that started to sort of make me a little nervous was because we were out of sequence, I was then shooting some of the stuff after I'd been burnt before, so they did the prosthetic of me being third degree burns on both arms, forearms and hands, and actually the back of my head, which you don't get to see in the film. And we had a real medic, the real set medic had worked with fire burns before. Mm -hmm. And I would sit and I'd be watching this prosthetic and it was so well done that you'd look at your hand and your brain is like trying to comprehend. <laughs> Oh, you're not, yeah. You know you're not burnt, but it looks so real, you know. And then this this paramedic, I started asking him like, "Well, how real is this?" And does this, you know? And then I'd say to him like, "But if I was really set on fire, I mean, it'd take a long time to burn this much." And he's like, "No, no, not five, ten seconds. Once, wow. Ten seconds. Once your, once your fat sets yeah. alight, then you know." Oh God. Be, so if it goes wrong, you could look like that within like ten seconds of the fat starting to burn on your hand. Well, you're also you're wearing a ton of like rayon and seventies, you know, polyester type yes. stuff. Yes, yes, but they they do yeah. they do spray all that stuff down. Okay. And they really, try, you know, and they put gel in your hair and all of that. But so psychologically, like getting all these war tales. And then he was telling me about the different burn victims that he had sort of encountered. Oh, that's nice. So we were talking about that's it. And I was really going on. And then as I went on, I was like, this is really starting to feel worrying. So, but come the morning, I'd made such a thing of it. I had to just like man up. And yeah. Like, well, because that's like, that's like going <laughs> bungee jumping. And there's like, hey, let me tell you some stories about all the time those ropes mm. broke. Oh yeah. God. yeah, it's not good. Um, yeah. So, is this something you would ever do again? It sounds like it was such a process that it's like a once I probably, in a lifetime. No, day. I mean, I, I probably would because because they did make it so so safe, and the stunt guys are so good, man. And there's like they're not going to let you burn, and there's like five of them will jump on you with with mm -hmm. fire extinguishers. It really just is the psychological thing that you have to get over. Right, you're dealing with these guys, they're such pros. You know, when they do those really crazy full body burns and stuff, that's also that's another league where they put masks on. And, do you have Hats off uh, to those guys. Do you have like a bucket list of things you hope to get to do in movies? Like I mean I don't. I should maybe consider that. Cuz you've you've done some weird stuff. Like yeah, you've had you've true. turned into a part of partially an alien, you've been a cyborg, you've been a full-blown robot and then you've true. you've my been face set on fire. Like shot off. I've no, I've <laughs> read in, my nose shot in. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I've read in interviews that you you're not you're not wild about playing villains mm. because it does it does kind of mess with you. Yeah. What was the process kind of getting into character for for Free Fire? This was fun because he's just, you know, he's a fun character and the tone of the movie was going to be fun and we knew it was going to be a character movie. So you don't come to see it for the, for the plot, you come to see sure. it to watch interesting characters and 
great actors doing interesting characters, and everybody in this movie just brings something amazing. And so this for me was a question of sort of, well, you know, Ben had said to me, we can do him South African, which originally was written as a British character. And there was a line, even on the British version that they'd written, where they said, you know, Vernon, uh, uh, Brie Larson's character explains him and says, you know, he was misdiagnosed as a child genius. Yeah. And never <laughs> got over it. And never got over it. And it, it kind it. of set the tone for like what I could do with him and what I would be able to do to make him interesting. Um, but I was really drawing on certain stereotypes and archetypes of, you know, 70s, sort of international 70s with fashion and all yep. that, but then specific South African dialects from that period and kind of slang and behavior and kind of calling girls doll or birds or, you know. Uh, <laughs> I do love that sort of the sexism and just being able to be yeah. like unabashedly, you know, sort of macho, you know, but not... And that, that's what also made him, so, I think. He's also like such a fussy dude when like the, the shrapnel starts blowing off parts mm. of his suit, mm. you know. It's, I don't think mm. he's as worried about being hurt as he is about his style. Taking no, in hit. the beginning, in the beginning he's worried because it doesn't seem serious enough. Yeah. You know, it's a relative scale of stuff. So he's like, if he spent like a huge amount of money, it would probably be like the most expensive suit that you could buy. So when that gets damaged, that's going to cross his mind. Um, but then as it gets worse, then he does want to just get out of there and is very self-serving. This wasn't the kind of movie where people were actually counting the amount of bullets they were shooting, okay, right? Okay, I, I was. Really? So just for the record, yes. I just That's wow. how that's as, as method as I get. Like, I was like, <laughs> I said to Ben, dude, I need to know how many times I'm shooting. And I knew it was completely a waste of time of to actually do that. But I would do it. I'd be like, okay, I've shot five. I've got like two more. And I've still got these many magazines. You know, so it, just, just, just. There was like, it was like a, it almost felt like a zen like amount of bullets being fired in this. And like, it, to the point where if you didn't hear gunshots for a few minutes, you were like, is everything okay? Which mm. is the opposite of what should happen. 